And the car number 16 had a flat left front. What a tough break for Tom Hubert from Mooresville, North Carolina. In his Chevrolet. There is Hubert. He's originally from Redding, California. It looks to me like the left rear's flat on the tire now. Oh, and someone, Dick Rice is walking away from his car, parked it beside the racetrack, and is walking away. Oh, wait, that's a 10 car, one of those rental cars that you talked about earlier, Gary. And here is Juan Hornaday, Jr., the car number 97. His car performing flawlessly. The 77 car is a lap down. Second place car is Jim Inglebride. Third is Kenny Peterson. Fourth is Brian Germoni. Fifth will be the car number 33 of Kenki. And this is the sixth place car right here. Craig Rodman in the car number two. spinning off the course right in front of you, VP. Oh, yeah, the 48 car had a little bit of contact. Rudy Reback, one, I forgot who, who it was, came in here, bumped him in the back. Rudy spun, and guess what? The baby won't refire. He's sitting there. He should be driving away, but he can't get it started. We have just the tail end of it. And I guess it was the 40 car. I don't want to put the shoe on his foot if it don't fit, but it looks like Frank Moroski was the fellow who made the contact with him. And Rudy Reback, the SCCA road racer, having trouble down at turn 11. His car is still failing to fire. We'll come back with more exciting road racing action after this. Mustang safety car leading Ron Hornaday Jr. under caution, a full course caution for the fourth time today. Take a look at the super truck results from Portland International Raceway 200 lapper last night. Max race cars 200. How about Mike Skinner? Congratulations to Mike, the GM Goodrich Service Chevrolet. Rutland, Butch Miller, Toby Butler, and Mike Bliss in the top five. Six through ten, Jeff Bodine went up there and drove last night. Finished six, Bill Sedgwick, Rick Corelli, former Winston West champion. Ron Hornaday Jr. driving for Dale and Teresa Earnhardt, our current leader here. He finished ninth. And Jack Sprague in tenth spot. Bob Keselowski, Bob Strait, Sammy Swindell, John Nemechek, and Dennis Woolridge finishing in 15th spot. And 16, Poncho Carter, P.J. Jones, Jerry Glanville, Steve Portingay, the series champion from Southwest a year ago, he finished 19th, and Wayne Jacks in 20th. Take a look back through 26th spot, Scott Legacy, John Kinder, Walker Evans, Jerry Churchill, former Arctic competitor, and Kerry Teague finishing in 25th spot. And Mike Hurlburt finished in 26. That's the Max Race Cards 200 results from Portland International Raceway run on Friday night. And Saturday, June the 3rd, I get to do my first super truck race, the Four Dealers 200 from Louisville, Kentucky, and I can't wait. This looks like to be one of the most exciting things that's happened in NASCAR in a long, long time, and I'll be there in Louisville on June the 3rd. And folks, they have been talking about the super trucks all over the country, particularly here on the West Coast, where they have been ex getting the fans excited. They had a sellout at Portland International Raceway. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Well, Jerry, the cars are coming into turn seven here right now, getting ready for a green flag as they come back around. And Craig Rodman made a pit stop there just a moment ago. Craig, what was your problem? Oh, man, same thing as before. I get up to the front, I get stuck in fourth gear, and I go back to the back. Boy, this is getting tiring. Boy, I'll tell you, you have had a tough day, and you got lesser laps now to make it up. Can you do it? I think we can do it. We've already, we've already gone back up to six again, and I think we got uh, a good chance of getting up there again. And I just want to say thanks to Mike and Judy Huber from Mike's Body Shop and Anderson for giving us a big hand with the car. Okay, good luck to you again, and we'll be back to Sears Point with more right after this. at Sears Point Raceway. We are 14 laps away from the conclusion of the Budweiser 200. The car number 20 is currently in second spot. But remember back a few laps ago, about 15 laps ago, what happened to Jim Engelbright? There he is backwards up at turn one. He backs off the racetrack. The entire field goes by, and he is dead last on the restart. And guess what, folks? He is right behind Ron Hornaday Jr. in front of you, Benny. Well, he's not, because the 77 car is between them now. The 77 car is a lap down because of the trouble he had in the pits. If, but he, if he can move out of the way and let Engelbright get there, maybe we'll have a race for the lead. 
because Engelbright, in fact, is a third place car in line behind Hornaday and the 77. But Hornaday nails a gas, and right now Engelbright just can't get up on his back bumper because of the 77 car. As you said, the car number 77 being shown one lap down. They with black flag for excessive speed on pit road. Here's Kenny Peterson trying to make a move for second spot. The car number 21 as they head down to turn two. And it looks like Engelbright will slam the door. And Peterson now trying to get by. And, and look at Peterson go to, oh, baby. I thought he had it, Jerry. I near miss and Brian Germoni back there. He is in fourth position, the car number five. Right side of your screen. They come up almost the hill in turn four. They will head down the long sweeper. And R.K. Smith has been back in the pits, we are told. He had a flat tire. There's the car number 87. Road racer who started four today. He had an unscheduled pit stop. It looks like the 77 car is not a point, Ned. Uh-oh, the 20, Engelbright gets wide. Did he get him there? He got awfully wide, but I don't believe Peterson's going to be able to get him. No, as they head into the S's, they single file again. Not much of a place to pass down through here as they come through the S's, although Peterson is certainly keeping the pressure on, and there's Germani in the car number five, and the car number 33 of MK Kanky hanging right in there, too. Now, as they come down to turn 11, will be Peterson be able to outbreak Engelbright into the corner? Here he comes. Is he going to try? Well, there's MK Kanky that we see trying to outbreak Germani and was not able to do that. The cars will come off the corner in single file. And the 46 car looped it off the climb. Wow, did he spin backwards. But he gets the car back in first gear and away he goes. That's Danny Crafton who was running in sixth place when he spun from off the corner. And Benny, he came all the way from 27th starting spot in a fourth. Car number 46 of Danny Crafton takes a loop. There he comes in the corner. He's a little bit high. He tries to nail the gas to catch that car in front of him. He nails it too hard, Jerry, and watch as he nails it against Spence at 360, but he backs up and loses some time as he backs up and puts the car in first gear. You say he started 27th, they got up to 6th. He's probably back about 20th now. He's going to work his way back to the front. There's the car number 16 who is off the track. He gets the car refired and pulled back up. You see now 12 laps to go. That's Tom Hubert, former pole sitter out here. There's the man they're chasing, Ron Hornaday Jr. And that's the differential between himself and the second and third place car number 20 of Jim Engelbright and Ron Peterson in the car number 21. Ken Peterson, I should say, in the car number 21 is third. Boy, Peterson keeps the pressure on, but there's not uh, a great deal that he can do. And here is Craig Rodman in the car number two that made that unscheduled pit stop. The car got hung up in gear again. He's trying to move his way back through, Jerry, but he's got a long way to go. Yeah, he came back out of the pit, 19th spot. 11, Craig. As the last car on the lead lap, he has passed two cars and trying to work his way back toward the front, but we're approaching just... 10 left to go. In fact, still 12 to go here as they head down to turn 11. I heard his crew say, you're up to 11th, Craig. Keep going. Trying to encourage him to go as hard as he can. Of course, you really don't have to do that too much to a race car driver, do you, Ned? No, no, they, that's their nature. Car number 14 right in front of him. That is Robert McGrew out of Mill Valley, California in the shameless racing Chevrolet. shift there just backed off the accelerator this is up in turns three now oh, he's going to try to go on the inside this is down in turn four and he has to bring all those wheels to get slowed down keep from running over this 14. and here's the leader ron hornaday right in front of him building that lead over the car number 20. Peterson still right on the back bumper of the number 20 as they head down through the S's. Looks like Peterson is a little bit faster than Engelbright, but he just simply cannot get by right now. Engelbright is doing a good job staying his, his car staying in the groove, but I think if Peterson gets by, he might be able to make a charge to the front. There's a look at Jim Engelbright in second position, the car number 20, Ken Peterson, former winner here back in 1991 at Sears Point, is in third. 
as they working behind the lap car number 77 of Ron Peterson. And that time, Ron Peterson got awfully wide. Engelbright trying to get on the inside. And meanwhile, Penny Peterson. Let's see if the 20 car going to be able to get by. He looks like he is. And I got a couple of cars. You know, right there in front of me, that's Charlie Saeed in 93, and the 85 car, Mac McGarry, spins around. They, both of them are able to, well, I started to say they're not, they get the cars one, but Charlie Saeed is sitting in the racetrack, not able to get the car in reverse. Let's watch replays. Now he finally was able to get the car in reverse. Reverse, I'm sorry. There we see Ch Charlie Saeed. He, Mac McGarry goes around, and just Charlie Saeed trying to miss him, he loses control trying to miss McGeary. No contact between those two cars. But it is clear up in turn 11, no caution flag here. And Ron Hornaday Jr. showing 10 laps to go. He is 10 laps away from his second win in 1995 in Featherlight Southwest Tour competition. Back with more from Sears Point in a moment. Sears Point Raceway, the Sonoma, California, the start of the Budweiser 200, 200 kilometer events. And there's the leader, Ron Hornaday Jr. But moments ago, there's a little bit of action up there in front of you, Ned. Yeah, Peterson gets on the inside of Engelbright in the car number 20. And watch here as the 21 car gets almost completely sideways, misses him when he comes back to get straightened out and on their way. Now, was that great driving, Ned, or was that a little bit of luck on both their parts? I tell you, it was some great driving, Jerry. No question about it. They were, they had their hands full here. And Greg Rodman is fun coming in turn 11 with our camera car. He finally, he's got the car restarted. He puts it in first gear and drives yeah. away. Came in the corner. No brain, totally no brain. I had to spin it out. That's good there, Greg. Yellow flag. Have you just heard on the radio, Craig Rodman said he had no brakes, said I had to spin it out. We got the number 58 that's stuck up here just off turn seven. Paul DeBay, I guess that's the way you pronounce that, Jerry. I'm not sure, but that's anyway, right, he's Ed. sitting here, and his left wheel is down sort of off the track there, and his, his, the rear of the car is up on those tires, and uh, he can't go. Now let's go down to Benny. We're going to watch the replay on Craig Rodman as he comes in the corner. There he is, and you heard him say on the radio, I had no brakes. As Ned said, I had to spin the car to keep going in the tire barrier head on. Did a great job, did a 360, stopped the car, put in first gear and, and driven back away. And we'll probably be going into the pit area this time to try to find some brakes for this thing. Unbelievable, he had just worked his way back for about the third time today into the top 10 and he suddenly loses the brakes and now spins the car and brings out the caution hey, Craig, for the fifth you guys time make today. Copy that, Craig. He wants you in. Gotcha. That was Roger Bracken talking to Craig. Said, you make a decision. we got to make a decision. He said, okay, we want you in. We want you back in the pits. Well, he's up in turn seven right now, Jerry, so he's got a while to go before he gets there as they get that 58 car unstuck. Here's the in-car camera replay of what happened just a moment ago in turn 11. Right, Vinny. He did a good job there not to hit anything if he didn't have any brakes coming into that turn. He really did. And, and to spin the car to slow it down that much, yeah, super job. In case you're wondering what advantage means, that's advantage memory. They manufacture computer memory upgrades. Dave Reed owns the company and, and owns this race car, which is trying its darndest to get a top 10 finish. As we're under caution here for the fifth time of day, the field summary showing where your favorite driver is running as still 18 cars are on the lead lap at Sears Point Raceway. Back with the final laps in just a moment. 